Michael. Right. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. How are you? I'm great. And how are you both, both doing? Oh. Yes. We're awesome. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and it's always lovely to be here with Tandeep Singh. Oh, gosh. Oh. Anyway, and uh, Dr. Sasha. <laughs> Yes. Dr. Sasha out of the world. A doctor out yes. of this beyond <laughs> reality. Exactly. And you're always um, uh, with us, your wisdom and your awareness. And, uh, you know, I, um, we've been doing these uh, seven weeks. We're in the middle of them, of the seven steps with seven different topics. And uh, so interesting what shows up for you when you're communicating, right? With yourself, with, with others. And I was so amazed with uh, Dr. Sasha uh, doing a week um, about going beyond gender and what showed up with, um, for her, her awareness, her brilliance <laughs> with that. And um, just about um, women. And it's so interesting that when talking about women and you can jump in at any time, Dr. Sasha, when talking about going beyond gender, that um, being a woman shows up um, for you. And what's interesting is who showed up for us was you. <laughs> <laughs> so true. are you a woman? <laughs> Maybe I am, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. And, exactly. and also you get that yin and yang, you know what I mean? Those, we're, we're all yeah. 360 degree uh, people, aren't we? Um, so, a lot of times people feel like they have to be a woman and approach life as a woman, or they have to be a man and approach life as a man. And uh, Dr. Sasha, if you just want to share a second, what, what your awareness was uh, about that and give an introduction to. Um... Yeah, absolutely. For me, it, it like it was so interesting throughout the week, like pondering on this topic. And then even after that, pondering on it, because I had... Um, until we started doing the seven steps, seven weeks, it wasn't even in my awareness that, oh, I'm a woman and it matters. But when I started doing the topic, I was like, wow, I've actually uh, been there and done that. I've actually been at the effect of where I was a woman and where I was looked down upon or looked at as less than or been invalidated or, you know, I don't have capacities because I have breast and I'm, I look a certain way. And also from, you know, how you can, how you can dress, how you're supposed to walk, how you're supposed to talk, um, how you are presentable to the world, um, whether you are a, um, a dignified lady or whether you are someone who's rowdy, um, you know, like it, it all like ties down so dynamically. And then the, um, the way you treat yourself then gets sort of dictated um, based on all of that coming in. And it just started to get me to think that, wow, um, you know, it ties down to your sexual, your sexualness, your ability to receive men, your ability to be present with other women, your ability to like, um, because, because you have these warped uh, ideas of yourself because you're a, a, a a girl or a boy or you're a girl pretending to be a boy so that you can fit in into society and so that you can prove that yes I have what it takes to be there or to be at a certain level or a certain platform and to be able to do things and it just it took me back to a medical college where you know uh, oh yeah you're a chick so you're not going to be able to do this really well and I just look at them and I'd go like what are you talking about? Like, I can do this with both hands. And I'm sure you can't do this with both hands right now. Like, like, hello. And I just, it, it wasn't like, you know, there was such a fight back then, where it was like, I had to fight to prove something. And then eventually, I just realized that the fight doesn't have to be there. I don't have to pretend to be uh, somebody who I'm not, I can just be me. And I can just look at where people are, and work with that rather than trying to bring them to certain places, um, show them that it's possible through what I can do without having to prove anything at all. And so that sort of shifted everything to the degree where I stopped even thinking about the fact that I'm a lady. And it would only show up in certain places where maybe I'm really dressed up and I'm sitting in a local transport in Bombay 
and then I would be looked at a particular way or I would be uh, seen as certain someone or something and you know at a, or if you're not very dressed up and you enter a fancy restaurant or and then they'd look at you and go like what kind of lady are you how are you not dressed up for this or you know it, it's so much is tied down to how um women treat women women treat men men treat women we treat ourselves it's it was huge to have this like uh, a different take on all of it and then just go like okay if if this didn't have to be this way then what is the approach like you know with the seven steps what can i be or do to have this communication with myself be different with them be different inviting people to something different for themselves so that they don't have to be at the effect of it because i have a lot of ladies come up to me and talk to me about oh my you you know you have this and i was like oh honey uh, i do yes i agree but i also have like worked at it and i've also like looked at all of it and seen what it what's really true here and that hasn't necessarily been easy but it's been a gift to do it and so you know you it's so it interesting uh, it's that um the way and you can maybe share this with us you know we talk about in the seven steps how you connect with yourself you know and sometimes it is influenced by the way other people connect with you you know, like you were saying, like going on, when you go out there, you're like, oh my goodness, right? Connecting with you based on how other people are observing you, you know, and how then you begin disconnecting and about that reconnecting phase with yourself. Um, so you establish true connection and the way you, um, Ratan Deep, I want to call you Mr. Singh for the first time in my life, but... <laughs> Um, you never, you, what the, you're, the gift that you are, you never actually um, bring that up in people to disconnect from themselves. But the way you approach is an invitation for um, people and women, I'm a woman, so this is where I'm saying it from this for a second, to connect with the truth of who they are. It's such a gift. What, what, what is that about for you, my darling? Yeah, basically, uh what i saw around was that women unfortunately in this world were not treated kindly they were normally looked down upon they were made wrong for things they were made incompetent like you can't be a surgeon you can't be a pilot i remember once i was when i was still in the army i shared with one of my air force colleagues that you know, I flew in an, uh, in a flight where the entire crew was women, you know, from the pilots to the cabin crew and everywhere. And he said, if I had known that, I would have never gone onto the plane. But that is the fixed point of views in with which this reality treats women. And I was not very comfortable with that. I was not very comfortable with the way uh, we we talk about women and we treat women. And I think women, if, if, if you really ask me, I think in my life, the most powerful figures have been women. And I find that women today, for whatever reason, they give up their powers to, to men. And then they are subjugated by them. For no reason at all. I feel that women inherently are stronger than men. They are better than men in many ways. And I would, I, I just feel that why can't we treat women kindly with being, just accepting them for who they are. So that, that's what I feel. Absolutely. And you know, it's um, interesting when you say that you were not comfortable with the way you were um, observing people treating women. Um, or, and how many people have that, that first step of, you know, uh, not being comfortable. And instead of going on the route of being more honoring of women, which you do, and also inviting women to be more honoring, they, how do they react to that discomfort in detaching from women? You know what I mean? Yeah, actually, that's also, I mean, that's a nice point to put out, put across because normally what happens is uh, men start to feel uncomfortable in the presence of women. They don't know how to behave, how to treat themselves, and therefore they start to detach themselves from women. That's 
Yeah, that is a, an aspect which, which you brought over to. Yeah. Of, and, of course. yeah, go ahead, sir, Susa. And I, <clears throat> I've also been noticing how really kind and caring men will detach themselves so that they don't appear to be dominating over the woman. And in doing so, they also have to like shut down their capacities and their abilities. And then women like us who can see it, we're just like, you don't have to do this for us. Yeah. Come be you and please be, we actually enjoy it. And I'm sure that there are a lot of people who, you know, it, with the gender thing, I, I noticed that it wasn't just about the women. It was also about the men. It was also about empowering both to have, to be kind to both and to notice that there are going to be some women who are going to be mean. And then there are going to be some men who are going to be mean. It doesn't, it's not based on the gender, the way we've made it to be about gender. We have to start looking at, at people as individuals and as their own beings in order to finally know the truth of them and maybe even look at what they might be choosing to be in, in certain moments. Uh, and that can come from so many other factors because I, you know, I would have a conversation with the men and, and like they would really shy away from uh, talking or being vulnerable because that's considered wrong, because it's considered uh, that they would be a woman and then they wouldn't be considered as being a man or being macho or being really strong and, and all of that when their true strength really does lie in that space of them being kind and vulnerable and they could accomplish anything from that space. Um, but they shut it down because it's, uh, it's not seen as something valuable here. And it's, then they have to pretend to be someone they're not. And that, you know, it's so obvious when somebody's pretending to be somebody that they're not, you can, you can tell instantly. And you're just like, Oh, honey, come, let's just, just be, it's okay, you know, and I'm sure we've all been there trying to figure it out in our own journey to actually being comfortable with ourselves. And when you get there and then you see it in other people and you're like, wow, so then there's either two things that one can do, either go into the judgment of them, which doesn't really change anything, or enter a space where you go like, okay, so what can I say to them? Or what can I be here for them? That will make them comfortable. That will invite them to their connection, you know, which really something the seven steps provided me with was like, oh, you mean I can be connected to me and I can invite someone else to be connected to them. And that's a real gift because they don't have to feel like you're a threat to them, nor do they have to feel like, they are a threat to the world if they were being the truth of them. And it can be more inclusive, more dynamically vulnerable and comfortable and ease-filled space. And of course, then there's no fight and then there's no reaction. So then it, it kind of takes you away from the trauma and the drama that we're so used to living by. So it's a little different. Yeah, so I, I feel that one of the things that uh, I, it creates this is this image that we have, we create of, of ourselves, of what we would like to look like, what we would, what we would like other people to perceive us like. And, and we try to live by that image. And this is the image that, whether you're a man or a woman, the image that you create is not you. That is where you don't have a connection with yourself. So this is the image you create. And then you feed everything into creating and maintaining that image. And if that image is not created or not maintained, you feel insecure. So what you need to really do is give up the image, be you yourself, be who you truly be, and be an invitation to everyone, man or woman, to allow them to be themselves and to connect with themselves. Because if, if there is anyone you are interacting with and they are not connected to themselves, you cannot really have a very true and honest relationship or conversation or anything with them yeah. because they are in between they are not connecting with themselves that's what i get absolutely and you know um when people get um nervous or do not feel comfortable uh if that passage between being uncomfortable and getting to a level of comfort if that actually slows down, then the communication would go faster. Because a lot of times we go into reaction when we're not feeling comfortable. But what I'm always in, in um, B 
becoming more and more aware of and, and sharing with people is sometimes that discomfort level means that you are actually getting access to an awareness that maybe you haven't been willing to have before. You know what I mean? When um, with the, the tools of uh, access consciousness, they, um, you know, there's a great book, Be, be, be You Change the World. But this um, discomfort may be, uh, as the founder of Access, Gary Douglas says, if you're feeling discomfort, the change you've been asking for is showing up. But a lot of times we go back, you know, back to um, that, okay, I don't want the change or I wanna be comfortable and I'm going to be pushy and put up uh, barriers and not allow people to make me feel uncomfortable and, you know, put on a veil, steps three and four. <clears throat> and first, just like you both are saying magically, having a road back to you connecting with you first will allow you to go from discomfort to ease, right? Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And actually, uh, like you said, you know, uh, unlike the other, this reality, where you have to keep doing things to try and achieve things, in, in Access, we try and suggest to people that you just relax and let relaxation take you through your creation process. And while you're relaxing, and then you are aware of the discomfort, and like you said, the discomfort very often is the thing that you're asking for that is showing up. And, and unfortunately, consciousness or a conscious journey is not a comfortable journey. It's a journey where you're asking for change and people are not happy changing. People want to be consistent and be, and be constant so that nothing changes. And you know, in, in any equation, when you have constants, it's more easier to solve the problem than if there are too many variables. And unless you have too many variables, you can't really create something out of this world. Yes, and, and women, you know, it, it's so interesting. No, none of us would be here on the planet uh, and if there weren't women. <laughs> That's the way, you know, that the universe chose to get people here <laughs> through women. So the uh, women are a part of all of our lives, right? And the um, discomfort level that we um, level or, or experience that we can um, go to um, can't, can't always feel easy, um, but that doesn't mean you can't have ease with it, right? And we've talked about that once on one of our series together, uh, um, RD about people may be happy with change. Um, however, they're not um, comfortable with discomfort. Right? So, yeah. <laughs> so they desire change. And then when the change starts happening, it start, you feel that in your body, your body lets you know that the change is happening. You know, that step two, talk to your body. The body lets you know but if you go immediately into reaction, oh my gosh, <laughs> something's changing. I know that I did that with horses once in Costa Rica, <laughs> trying to get that horse to move faster, working with connecting with the earth, expanding my zone, right? And as soon as the horse would do what I, the change that I was asking for, moving faster <laughs> and go into reaction, put up the walls and barriers and slow it down. And so what is, what, do you suggest um, about the perhaps the, the the discomfort that we might have with women? Um, has that ever shown up um, for you? And and what has been your your expanding the space and not reacting immediately, but actually approaching it from a different way? So I'd like to share that uh, throughout my childhood. When I was growing up, I was very uncomfortable with women. Because being in the army, being, you know, all, it was never, a, uh, I was never comfortable with women. I was very, very uncomfortable. It's only after I got married and after this, when we, uh, we actually got into access, that I realized, wow, this is the way we, are, we have to live. And this is what expanded me and my awareness 
Judge, it's okay. They're not going to hurt you. They're not going to harm you. They're not going to take you for a ride. They are, they are there. And if you look at them for who they are, that discomfort will go. But if you, if you try to make them be who you think they should be, okay. then you go to very often we have uh, we we try to control the way women uh, do things in our lives, do things with us. Because if it's not the way we want to do it, then there's something wrong. Whereas if you just be an allowance of them and let them be the way they are, it's so beautiful. It's actually, if I could say it, basically access that changed my perspective on women and my brought me to an expansive state of where I was. And that women really are such a great contribution. Absolutely. And this is what, you know, inspired me uh, to even write the book on the seven steps. Uh, uh, Gary Douglas telling me, look, you have to get it out there in the world, how you communicate uh, with people. And of course, you know, I was like, why? You, you do it fine. Why do I have to do it? <laughs> because the way each of us does it is in a, uh, in a unique way. And the moment um, that I did that, um, also this guy, Ratan Deep, started signing up for all of my classes, alive and online. And I was like, this must be <laughs> something, you know, <laughs> spam or something. Um, but being there. And one of the, the gifts uh, that you are, and we have this in common, is that you see the truth of people. Yeah. You see beyond their veils, beyond their barriers, you see the truth of who they are. And you're um, a kind invitation for them to acknowledge that. Yeah. yeah. And so does Queen Kieran, your wife. <laughs> and it's so, it's so interesting. I remember um, the many times we've been together around the world in the United States and in. And, in India and uh, in in Rome, at my house, at your house, and you know, and um, and the way that the invitation that we are, the way we um, connect with ourselves, the first phase of seven steps, recognize when we're disconnected, and how we reconnect, and that reconnecting is an invitation to for people to see things from the perspective of others, and you do this so well with, for me, with everyone, but certainly with me and with, um, with- With me too. Mm -hmm. Dr. Yeah. Sasha and with uh, Kieran. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about that? Step five is engaging with the universe, engaging with people um, and expanding the zone. Yeah. So basically, like, uh, if you take Cass's, your, your, uh, your case, the first time I, I saw you was on an access video where you came up for, I think, five or 10 seconds or 20 seconds. And I saw you there and I said, like, this is someone whom I need to meet. It was just the energy of you. I had never met you. I didn't know what you did. But the way you spoke and the way you came across was so beautiful. And I had to, and, and the universe always has your back and it, it made it happen. And, and we met and, and we've been on such a beautiful journey. Thanks to you, Gas, it was amazing. And as far as Dr. Sasha goes, I could see her for her true self, for what she is, contributing to everyone. And you know, the way she is connected with herself, connected with everyone else. It's such an amazing thing just to be in her presence. It's so beautiful. So amazing. Absolutely. And I remember when I first met uh, live uh, Dr. <laughs> Sasha, she came to a seven steps uh, uh, book reading. Uh, in um, Mumbai and she and her sister and her mom were there and they came up to me and bombarded me with their receiving. <laughs> oh my goodness, we, we saw you online and you changed my life. 
my, with my connection with my body and um, my health. And of course, you know, I'm a doctor and I'm like, boom, 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 boom. So <laughs> <laughs> do you remember that? I still can see you in the I line do. with your mom and your I sister do. in Mumbai. And uh, yeah, and something I that, do, yeah. yeah. And so what is that when we're talking about reconnecting with people? What is that way that we can invite people to really establish true connection with themselves, yeah. um, with their bodies, right? Like you were saying, uh, Dr. Sasha, you know, with the world, with the planet, yeah. You know, I, I mean, I don't know if you guys know, but like you two are like two of my favorite people on the planet. And I'm super grateful for you all because I have, I have seen, I have learned from you all. I have grown with you all. I have... I remember um, even the first time I met RD, I don't think I like we knew each other with names. And I remember walking into the ESB class and he was just um, greeting everybody. And I'm like a stranger to him, right? Like I, I'm, I haven't met him online. I haven't actually interacted with him. And he gave me the warmest hug I have ever received in my life. And my whole body melted. And I remember that moment so well because I was just like, what was that? That's what a hug should actually feel like. <laughs> oh my God. And it was, it was just like this space of generosity and kindness. And, you know, I feel like what you asked right now is like, how do you do that? I have seen you both do it just by being you. I saw, like, I've seen Cass, Cass when we were in the States together, I've seen you interact with so many people and make them feel so comfortable. And they're, you know, from like um, a person who's like really neutral and really dull and not really enjoying their day, they'd have one interaction with you and their whole world, like you could see them smiling by the end of it. You could see them, that little spark, that that X thing that's, that is them come out and show up on their faces. And they'd be like, what just happened? This is fun. And it would be like, it's like, it's like, just being present with people and being present with yourself and really having no judgment and being willing to engage with everything can be such an inspiration to how, you know, because people need to fight against something and when there's nothing to fight against, they can relax. And I guess that's what you guys inspire more than, more than anything else. And I'm still learning from you all. And I'm very grateful to have this opportunity to learn from you all because it's amazing to to see that transformation occur in people and their bodies as you just be with them. Thank yeah. you for, thank you for, for that uh, acknowledgement. And what the inspiration um, that you are, uh, Ratandeep, to us is how the kindness. Yeah. Right. Good thing I didn't put on yeah. mascara because tears are coming. Yeah, from yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the kindness that you invite um, by being it and pulling out that illumination that women are and allowing that to shine um, in the world. Yeah. So the continuity and what you were saying. This is a mm, this is a question for both of you. The con what you're saying. Yes the inspiration that we are for people to see the truth of them and to shine. And if we are not with them every 10 seconds of every day, what invitation, in what way can we be an invitation for them to continuously be that, or at least to know how to get back to that, get back to themselves, get back to their shine. We'll take it, whichever one of you would like to. Yeah, so, uh... Being together in every 10 seconds is not really required, is not necessary, is not essential. Because we can connect uh, across thousands of kilometers. Distances of no, uh, no consequence and no, no, nothing when it, when it talks about, or when you talk about the energy of who you are. And just being the energy that you are, the invitation and the energy that you are for everyone, your life, I think it, it 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 gives them a little awareness that wow, there is someone there, and you know you can feel it across distances everywhere. So that's what I'd like to say that you don't have to be present with everyone. 
to really change their lives, even if you just connect with someone and energetically it works beautifully. So if you had a, some <laughs> advice for them. For the women? Um, well, we're talking about women today, but um, and women are uh, uh, human beings. <laughs> so um, for human beings, how that reconnecting with yourself um, when you lose your connection? Yes, yeah, so the point is that uh, you have to first know that you need to acknowledge the moment you are un you're disconnected with yourself. And once you acknowledge that, that oh, oh God, I'm not, I'm not connected. So now you've got to reconnect with yourself. And when you may, when you say reconnect with yourself, you have to see who you truly be, and be that, and have no judgment of yourself or judgment of anyone, and no images, nothing. You just try to be who you are. And once you be that, see, very often we don't want to be who you are because we have so many judgments about how weak we are, how vulnerable we are. And if I'm that, then people will take advantage of me. But actually, that's not true. The truth is that if you be who you are and you connect with people and connect with yourself, just the way you are, all the vulnerability, everything thrown out, shown out, not hiding anything, that's the connection you get with yourself. And when you have, when you're connected to yourself, then you are free to, be, to connect with anyone else in the world. So you have to give up your points of views that you have about the discomfort of connecting with yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the first, when I talk all the time and in doing interviews and stuff, and I talk about the connecting with ourselves, um, that for some reason is the most, the most complicated <laughs> thing for people. <laughs> in the world and so the invitation that uh, we like to be is for people to recognize you can't get you wrong you have your unique way of being your unique brand of magic and you being here on planet earth is a contribution to the world you know so if you are in line with who you are then you can never get you wrong Sure. And there's no one that does you better than you. So please, what would it take for you to step up and be more of who you are and inspire others to be more of who they are? And that's the invitation that we acknowledge in your posts, in your talking um, uh, about women and acknowledging uh, women. Yeah. And so grateful for that. So grateful for that. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you both. And uh, have a wonderful um, lunch or dinner or whatever. <laughs> and please be the magic always that you are. Okay. Well, thank you. You don't know how much you need and how much you changed our life, Gas. And Sasha, you too. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank let's, you, guys. And let's <laughs> keep changing, even if it's not comfortable. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but let's be happy. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>